and there's a, a particular feel to a titanium frame that you don't get from anything else. We turn large, what we call hollows, into butted tubes, which then frame builders can use to build into frames. Reynolds, back in 1898, invented what was called butted tubing, a way to make tubing lighter for a bicycle frame, even from that era. And what we can offer our customers um, is that mix of, of old and new, of experience and innovation, and we hope that that comes out in, in the tubes that we offer and ultimately in the bikes that they make. We're a lot smaller, a lot more niche, but we kind of specialise in like high end and I think what we do, we do very well. Ultimately, that's what people recognise Reynolds as being, is a cycling company. And for as long as people still continue to try and make diamond frame bikes out of steel, um, we'll be there to, uh, to help them along the way. Hi, today I'm at Reynolds, the world's most famous bicycle frame tubing manufacturer. And all this magic happens here in Birmingham since 1898. Okay, let's see what's inside. Hello, I'm Keith Narone from Reynolds Technology, based in Birmingham, in, in an area called Hall Green, not far from the origins of Reynolds, Reynolds, back in 1898, invented what was called butter tubing. And that patent from 1898 was the foundation of a company called the Buttered Tube Company. And you'll see uh, a document that actually said back in, on December 20th, 1898, the inventors of the tubing sat down as directors and basically said, we have a patent, let's start a company. So over 125 years later, that patent is still the reason this company continues. My name is Tom Cleverly. I'm a technical manager here. My job is essentially product development, but um, I work with projects all the way through from sort of developing process routes and tooling. Um, I've got a metallurgy background, so that's kind of like my area of expertise. So essentially, what we bring in is, is um, we turn kind of large, what we call hollows, into kind of butted tubes, which then frame builders can use to build into frames. So the first step is essentially reducing the diameter to bring it to a workable size. So um, the raw material is cut into um, short pieces, which will then kind of stretch as they're drawn and butted. To bring the material down, um, we first of all, we must nozzle the tubes, essentially kind of dome the end of them so that they can be pushed to our draw benches. Um, and then the, the main process, the, the drawing of the tubes. To draw the tubes, um, you've got a die which gives you your outer diameter and a mandrel which gives you your, base, your internal profile um, and as the tube is pushed through the die um, it's reduced in diameter and essentially kind of squeezed between the two pieces of tooling. So after the tube's drawn, it's essentially stuck on the mandrel, um, so we've got a very clever piece of machinery called a reeler, which is basically two big offset rolls that as the tube goes through, they exert just enough pressure to cause the tube to spring open fractionally so that the mandrel can be extracted. 
that you will then go to a, a final sizing sink as we call it and that gives you your, your, your finished diameter. Typically if it's, if it's a, a main triangle tube, a larger tube, it'll then go on to, to finishing so we've got um, polish belts, something various grits that'll get finer and that'll give you your kind of your nice shiny tube at the end. I'm Martin Shefford, I'm the general manager at Reynolds Technology. Ultimately the most famous thing Reynolds has done is our 531 tubing. And back in the day the 531 reflected the chemical composition of the of, of the steel. 853 has been a remarkable material for us. It's been in production for, uh, for around 25 years. Um, we keep looking to try and find a, a better material um, and we just can't. Reynolds have been involved with 3D printing probably for about five to six years now. Really started off by trying to explore what this new technology could offer to the cycling industry. And we now offer 3D printed parts in both steel and titanium. And we have found that it's got a particular niche within cycling. Um, it has a certain degree of kudos around it, being able to advertise that your bike's got 3D printed parts on it. We find that it helps um, some of the little bits you can put in the design, really helps the guys who are assembling the bikes or who are welding the frames together, just helps them take a bit of time and complexity out of their process. What we've got to look at it is, you know, we've done 125 years, been through, you know, 20th century, two world wars, several recessions, many changes, changes from people where they make bikes and all the rest of it. And you know, in the next five, 10 years, there'll be more changes to come. And I think somehow, whoever runs this kind of business has got to think about how do we cope? And I'm fortunate we've got a great team to help me do that. Thanks for watching. I truly appreciate all your support in helping this channel grow. Thanks so much for the subscriptions, likes, comments and for sharing my videos with your friends on social media and forums. If you'd like to support the channel even more, consider becoming a member for some great perks and to help the channel continue growing. Simply click the become a member icon on the screen to learn more. Thanks very much and I'll see you again very soon.